My concept of the consummate actor is the person who can go outside of himself. You take a look at a Brando, who can go from the Wild Ones to Julius Caesar to Zucchini and Tea House of the Argus Moon. Look at this guy, James Ferentino, who can go from Stanley Kowalski to Peron, Peron, Peron in Evita to Arnie Potts. Wait till you see what this man has done in a beautiful uh, little show coming up called Something So Right. What kind of a risk did you take, sir? Well, first of all, thank you for putting me in the category of Brando. I mean, that's well, didn't my you, idol, too. You won the Stanley Co for your performance of Stanley Kowalski for the 25th yeah. anniversary, which is the same thing that he did? Yes, 20, 25 years, years earlier. So you have a lot in common. This is an unusual role for you. Yes, it's the, probably the riskiest thing I've done uh, as an actor or been allowed to do. Um, but in doing it, it's probably the closest role that I've ever had to myself, the closest character to me. Closest to you? Now, you've got to get the picture. This is a very handsome young man. And wait till you see him in this. You shave your head, you put on weight. That's the closest thing to you? Is well, that what you really I mean, look like underneath that? No, I don't mean... Well, yes. That's, what I'm, that's why I chose to do it that way. I wanted him to be uh, overweight and I chose to dress in polyester and balding and kind of inept as a macho uh, figure. Uh, so when I did all of that, stripped all of the uh, Jim Ferrantino persona away, I realized that I was really hitting on something that was very close inside me, the Arnie Potts that I like or the Jim Ferrantino that I like. And when you don't, when you don't have those masks to play with, the, the, the facades, the veneer, the good looks of the hair and the clothes, um, I discovered that it was uh, as closer to me than anything I've ever done. Right. Because I didn't have to cover up for my own ineptness. I didn't have to cover up for my own insecurity about myself. I had, uh, I had the character that I put on, but really what came out was more of me. Are you that warm? Uh, I'd like to think that I am, but it doesn't, uh, I don't show it as much as I was able to uh, playing Arnie Potts. I never had, I don't have that kind of opportunity. Mm. Uh, with the people that I love, I, I, I hope I am. You should see his walk. That walk, mm. did, did, you, did you observe people or how did you come up with that splay-footed Well, <laughs> it's, it, it, it all comes together actually because the, uh, the idea for the hair started and then I thought, well, I, want, I, can't, I don't have time to put on 40 pounds so I had a bodysuit made uh, and then I had wanted the clothes to be bigger than me, you know, all rumpled and, and baggy and the kind of shoes that I wear in this piece, nothing seems to match because he's a man with very little vanity. And the walk just started happening because of the clothes, you know. And uh, it, I just kind of fell into it. It just took over. You know? This is a story of a divorced woman who has an 11-year-old son. She's trying to raise the son herself. And the son has some problems. So he comes in representing the big brother to try to find some sort of attention, love to be given to the child. Yes. Jim, I think this has, it's a very significant message piece for a lot of single women. For single women and also for uh, single men too. I, I think, uh, not just for single people, but I think for divorced people as well. I don't mean to be heavy about this, but the reason I p wanted to play the character this way is because we're all brought up in a society that says, uh, that is geared towards uh, everything beautiful, beautiful people. And we look for those things in people, the, the outward appearance. And a lot of divorces take place because we're, we're uh, disenchanted by what we've picked. Mm. And in many cases, there are children involved, and people forget that and get very selfish. And when they split, they, the children are the ones who suffer. And what I wanted to show was the antithesis of a macho man or a, macho, or a good looking woman. Uh, and what you should really be looking for is what's inside a person, and that's what Arnie Potts is all about. Uh, and I hope that what it says is that, it, that it's not good looks that really matter, it's the good inside, you know, to be a little bit corny for a while. Uh, 
And that's what he's, he represents, I, I think. Because the kid, Ricky Schroeder, has an image of his father, oh, yeah. played by Fred Dryer, and done very well, too, of, you know, ex-football player, very macho, and um, that's his idol, uh, which I think all children have, you know, in their parents. And when Arnie Potts shows up, and he's a, he's a 360 from his father, <laughs> it's quite a chore to, for the kid to grow and, and for the mother to grow uh, with, through Arnie, one would say, and Arnie to grow, too. Uh, to, to accept a person for what they are instead of what they look like. And it's a, it's a lot of fun as well, you know. I don't want to make it a big drama, but it's a well, lot of fun. Well, but it's very too. moving. And yeah. in particular, I'm a single parent, so I identified a great deal with that woman, with a little boy yeah. trying to raise him alone. And I remember my child going to the prom for the first time, and I couldn't tie his tie. Yeah, I needed a man around for those little things. I didn't, I didn't know what he had to take the tie over to his girlfriend's father yeah. to tie the tie. So those kinds of things really moved me. They moved me too. And uh, that's why I love this piece. Um, for whatever this is worth, I had three teenagers watch the show last night. Kids who had never heard of you. They don't know who uh, James Ferrandino is. They never heard of Rosemary Clooney. All right, they're age 11, 16, 18. And I said, I want you to see this. They sat there spellbound. That's they nice. loved it. They identified. They, you've got a very That's special nice program here. You should Thank be very, you. very proud. I am. I'm very uh, proud. To whom do you credit your acting ability? Did you do it? Did a school do it? Well, schools don't do that. I mean, uh, you can't go to school as for, to be an actor. Um, it's experience. I've been doing it for 22 years. And I've made a lot of mistakes. and. It took a, a long time to get in touch with me, you know. I was fortunate enough to be able to earn a living while I was doing that as an actor, but I think one continually grows from life, uh, and that's what brought me to Arnie Potts. I, I don't believe I could have done Arnie Potts, say, five or ten years ago. I wasn't prepared for it, but in life I am now, and that's why I'm able to do that. So it's your observation. Oh, yeah. I think it's all acting it really is. But sometimes the reality, when you're looking, I remember, I remember I was going to play a crippled woman on stage. And I, I, I looked at real crippled people in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I remember getting behind a crippled man. I think he had cerebral palsy and he was walking very strangely. And I got behind him and tried to duplicate that walk. Mm -hmm. When I did that on stage, the director said, that's way too much. Mm -hmm. And that was this guy's walk in real life, but it had to be all toned down. Yeah. Sometimes the reality is greater than that which you have to portray as an actor. Well, you, you have to go from, after you've done the physical, external things, as, such as Arnie, my doing Arnie Potts, uh, balding, putting on the costumes and, and stripping away uh, all my hair and uh, getting into a, a physical characterization, then it has to come from in here. You know, you ask about the walk, which is similar to what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's something that has to come from inside, mm. you know, not just from observing someone, but from yourself, and it, as long as it's natural. Mm. I sure hope you'll see this.